Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a comparison of two sort of 7 inch class tablets. Basically, we have the 8 inch iPad Mini because it's 7.9 inches, and the Google Nexus 7, the 7 inch tablet. One runs Android, one runs iOS. Beyond that, what's the difference? We're going to look at them now. So here we have it, two, well, sort of 7 inch tablets, like I said, 7.9 inch display on the iPad mini, let's call it 8 inches. That's really what sets it apart from other 7 inch tablets, well it's a little bit bigger so you don't quite feel like you're living small. And the 7 inch Nexus 7, uh, the, the best thing about the Nexus 7 is the price, $199, and you don't get junk for the price, you get some pretty good internal components. 1.2 gigahertz quad core Tegra 3 CPU in here with GeForce graphics. That's that's good stuff there. And then the iPad Mini is pretty much an iPad 2 inside. You're looking at a dual core 1 gigahertz Apple A5 CPU with uh, granted Apple's excellent graphics on there, so it actually does benchmark faster in GL benchmark graphics tests. Though on the cross platform Geekbench test that looks at overall performance, the Nexus scores 1400. And 21 versus 752 for the iPad Mini. So clearly more raw horsepower inside the Nexus 7. For the base model on each of these, now you're looking at 16 gigs of storage. The 8 gig model for the Nexus 7 is gone now. And Nexus 7 starts at 199 for the 16 gig versus 329 for the iPad Mini. So you're going to be spending more money obviously on the iPad Mini. And they're both also available with 32 gigs of storage. That costs you $249 with the Nexus 7. And for the iPad Mini, if you want to go up on another storage increment to 32 gigs, that's another $100. So you're looking at $429 versus $249 here for the 32 gig Nexus 7. Obviously, on price, instantly, the Nexus 7 is the winner. What if you want to have a built-in wide area networking? That means 3G or 4G. With the Nexus 7, you can get 3G, HSPA+, plus, but no 4G LTE. And the, the HSBA Plus that's in the Nexus is unlocked, but it's it's the bands for the U.S. folks here. It's AT&T pretty much that you're going to want to use for that. Here with the iPad Mini, you get LTE, and there are different flavors. There's a Sprint one, a Verizon one, and an AT&T one. Of course, it's going to cost you more money again. It's $130 surcharge if you want to have the LTE built in. So that brings the price up to $459 for the 16 gig iPad mini with Wi-Fi and LTE 4G. However, you do get the versatility of being able to choose from three carriers versus one that's only pretty much AT&T compatible and is 3G but not 4G. Both have front HD video cameras that do a good job. A little bit better on the iPad mini with its nice FaceTime camera with a backside illuminated sensor and face detection. Pretty decent camera on the Nexus 7. As we turn around on the back, we will see there is no camera on the back of the Nexus 7. There is no rear camera. For $199, that's forgivable. Look at the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. Likewise, you don't get a rear camera for that price. With the iPad mini right up here, you can see we have a little camera lens that has a 5 megapixel camera, backside illuminated sensor, it can shoot 1080p video. Pretty decent camera, pretty comparable to the iPhone 4. So not bad, and given the fact that this is a smaller tablet, not as big as the full-size iPad or a 10-inch Nexus 10 tablet, for example, you don't feel so funny waving this around shooting videos using the rear camera. For those of you who are wondering, why does the iPad mini cost so much more? Well, besides the fact there's the usual Apple tax, Apple products are not cheap. There's some more expensive design elements going on. This has a metal anodized aluminum bag, 